Hi guys, this is Justin Butlian, aka Hawkeye Triple Seven Eight Seven from the Great Grind. So I record a video this evening. Uh, what I've done here is I've opened up um, a session I played over a year ago of two cent, five cent. I've got four hundred eighteen hands I played throughout the session. It's kind of mixed up between different uh, between the different tables, and you'll see what I mean by that when when we start going through the hands. Um, my goal is just to go through uh, the hands that I play in the session, find some interesting spots, uh, talk about my thought process behind the different decisions I made, and uh, hopefully that way you guys can can learn uh, a few a few things. Uh, before I dive into the hands, let's uh, let's go through my hat quickly. So. The blue number at the top is number of hands I have on the player. The first row represents VPIP, so I have early position, middle position, cutoff, and then 3-bet. Uh, is Sorry, not 3-bet, uh, preflop range, uh, raise is the last number in the list in the first row. I then have uh, steal, cutoff, button, small blind, and then fold to steal. I have 3-bet, um, I have fold to 3-bet. I then have uh, c-bet percentage, turn c-bet, fold to flop c-bet, uh, fold to turn c-bet, and this is aggro factor. And uh, sorry if I didn't mention the first number is uh, flop c-bet percentage. So I, I c-bet 75% of the time, it's a bit high actually, and I continue it on the turn 41% of the time after I c-bet. Uh, which is also, uh, no, I guess that's pretty good pretty fine um, so let's dive in here uh, looking at this table very quickly got a whole bunch of unknowns uh, two regs not a great table to be honest um, I pick up nine ten of hearts uh, under the gun it's a bit too loose to raise this but I decide to do it uh, guess I was feeling good about it um, decided to play a lot of hands especially in t uh, play I like to play a lot of hands at two cent five cent um, so I decide to raise it up. I get called by Denny, uh, once again unknown. Um, this is expected nine-handed to get called at least once. Uh, this is why raising with a hand like this under the gun is, can get a bit tricky. Uh, it does play pretty well post-flop and it's not too difficult to play so let's see what happens. Good flop for us, a6 deuce. Um, Denny is going to have a ton of aces in his range here, but he's also going to have pocket pairs, some suit connectors, depending what kind of players, he might have a very wide range here. Um, we definitely want to see bet here for two main reasons. Uh, first of all, if we just check, um, it's a bit too weak. We're going to have aces, a lot of aces in our range here as well, and Denny definitely can put us on an ace if he's got something like tens or, or jacks, um, decided to play them you know, without three betting. Uh, second of all, you know, if the turn comes something like a seven of hearts, then we pick up a ton of equity, uh, even against an ace, uh, and we want to bet again, put extra pressure on Danny and give us a ch give us give ourselves a chance to win a, a big pot on the river. Um, so I decide to see bet, pretty standard sizing, and we get called. Turns a six, not a great card for us. Uh, the reason for that, I don't really think Danny has many sixes here, but we don't have many sixes here, and any card, any pair that, uh, any hand that Denny had on the flop, he is now less likely to fold it on the turn to a bet. If he's got an ace, he's got no reason to think he, he has the worst hand. Um, you know, pocket eights, pocket sevens, maybe, uh, but I prefer just to give up here. It's just throwing away too much money. Our hand can't really improve. We're not going to push out many aces. Uh, not a two cent five cent you know full ring like this uh, so I decided to give up he bets and we just fold our hand the next hand uh, pocket eights uh, under the gun plus one um, same group of players so let's see what happens decide to raise it up pretty standard get a very small three bet from Pedro, don't really have any, uh, Pedro Zolo, don't have much information on him, uh, we have no information on him, we do know he's got a short stack, so 
you know, this is not a, you know, definitely not, doesn't look like a good player. Um, doesn't have 100 big blind starting stack. It's kind of a good indication he's a, he's a fish. It's three betting, very poor sizing. Uh, so at this point, we don't really know what he's doing here. Um, getting a very good price to call and set mine. Um, the problem with re-raising him here, I mean, it's a, just a bit too spewy. He's going to have over pairs here a lot of the time as well. Uh, we're going to be racing against a ton because if we bet, he's probably not folding ace-jack, ace-ten here. Uh, he might have low pocket pairs now and then. Um, so I'm not really, I don't really like re-raising him here in this spot. Side to call. We thankfully flop the middle set. Uh, it is a weak, uh, a wet board. But at the same time, we have, we don't expect him to, to check. Yeah, if we decide to check, can then raise and get it in. Hopefully he's going to have an over pair or a 10, maybe a flush draw now and then. So I check in my plan here is for him to bet. I'm going to re-raise big, commit myself to the part. Hopefully he's got an over pair and we can, we can stack him. Uh, he, but he decides to check back, which is a bit surprising. Uh, at this point, don't really put him on an over pair. Um, but at the same time, the board is really we wet. I need to start building a pot uh, so I can get the rest of his money. So I have to bet here. Make it a pretty standard uh, around 60% of pot. Uh, hopefully he's going to jam or, or at least call. But no, he decides to fold pick up the pot uh, and that's it so let's move on this hand folded so I'm just gonna skip until I get to a hand see this one over here um, whoops. so I open the sevens I get three bet and what I decide to do I decide to fold here um, it's a bit tight on my part you know I do have the odds to set mine here but it is a very it is pretty big uh, three bet um, I guess I just assigned this spot to fold uh, I don't think it's the worst play um, we don't really you know this hand is gonna hit a set or nothing we can't really you know it's gonna be too spewy if we are trying to play um, post flop uh, other than you know aiming to hit the set so I have to put another 30 35 here um, to potentially win almost five bucks so I'm not sure why I folded here it's a bit too too loose from uh, too weak uh, for me I usually would set mine this spot uh, next hand let's have a look so I raise it up here in the cutoff seven nine of hearts pretty standard um, I'm stealing around 40, let's see, cut off 34%. Um, yeah, it's a bit strange that my stats are showing something else here. Um, no, that's correct, sorry. Uh, cut off 34%. Um, so look, we've got Vla over here. He does 3-bit quite a bit, but at the same time, you know, we do have a hand which is pretty nice post-flop. Uh, so we want to raise here and steal the blinds. Uh, we get called here by uh, Loxa. Loxa. Uh, at this stage, we assume we're behind, right? We're not. We're not assuming the nine high is good here. Um, we're out of position. Loxa's on the button. So now we're hoping for a decent flop. Uh, we're also going to be c betting here a very high percentage of the time. Um, for obvious reasons, um, we're going to have very wide range here, uh, and therefore we've got to <laughs> excuse me, we've got to uh, balance our range a bit. Uh, if we're checking here too often, then we're gonna it's going to end up costing us too much money. Uh, Loxa, we also don't have any stats, so I'm not really sure what they're calling with here. Uh, so the flop comes Jack Nine Deuce got to see bet this flop it's it's wet uh, we do have second pair we want to kind of protect ourselves against um, some of the draws over uh, you know any aces uh, that can peel any king 
any queen any ten is going to get problematic so we want to bet here hopefully you know the board's going to continue low um or locks it just folds and we can pick it up so bet 25 i get called at this stage um let's think about this right we can see a lock says ace queen but let's just ignore that for a second um what are the kind of hands that the player here is going to have they could have some jacks some nines it's unlikely to have a nine since there's a nine here and one in my hand um so it's more likely to lean towards a, a jack but let's think about this right are they going to have ace jack maybe but we would expect a three bet so we can't really put them on a, on a jack something like jack 10 queen jack queen jack king potentially um but that's not that many hands right so most likely here they're going to be having they're going to have draws they're going to have the things like um well she could have nine ten it's going to be some part of the range but things like uh as we see ace queen ace king well, ace king and ace queen should be three betting here so it's difficult to put them on that range but as we can see uh loxa did have the ace queen here it's going to be a lot of flush draws it's going to be some gut shots things like 10 king uh 10 queen uh, you know something like eight or sevens potentially are going to be floating us once uh yeah i mean a lot of draws what else can i say uh Turns a seven, it's pretty decent card. Uh, we have two pairs, so if there was a jack, if uh, Lox had the, the jack queen, jack king, Tarham, we're now ahead. Um, the one straight draw got there, eight ten. Uh, but honestly, at this stage, we're very happy. We're assuming with the best hand. We can't really put them on on set of deuces. We would expect them to raise a flop. Um, don't really think they have something like ace jack or jack t king probably would have re-raised us on the flop uh so we have to now well i actually checked here i'm not sure why this is not a good play i should have been betting here for value uh so i check not very happy with that locks actually bets uh, less than half pot which is a bit strange bet here what is what is the player representing really um it's a wet board you would expect them to bet more with this made hand <laughs> so it looks very very weak uh i really should raise here and raise pretty big um trying to max value from something like a flush draw uh jack 10 jack queen jack king uh, but i just call which i'm not so happy about either uh, the turns a king, not a great card. Uh, jack ten got the a uh, jack king got the ten queen got there. Um, I decided to check again. Played this really poorly to be honest. Uh, locks of checks and I take it down. Um, yeah, I'm definitely not happy with that. The way I play the hand, I think I was being too pass, uh, way too passive, too scared. I'm not sure what I was thinking. Uh, but let's move on. Uh, king four. I'm assuming I folded. Yes. King seven, ace five. So here I should be raising. Uh, decide to give it up. Uh, I guess I could three bet here, um, but I just gave it up. Uh, king three under the gun. Fold queen, uh, jack seven, king four, three deuce, ace queen. Let's see. So a limp by Goblin here. Um, very strange. Uh, limp here. Uh, by this player who's playing really really tight uh, we can see that his um, his v pips low and his raise is low his preflop raises seven pretty big gap between the seven and the 16 if you notice that so it does mean that he's limping quite a big portion of his range um, he's actually playing more than double the percentage of hands that he's raising so he's limping more than than half his range um which isn't a good is, is, isn't great um it's you definitely want this number to be close uh in my case let's see um what are the stats hold on so mine are 
much closer um, than, than his is. Uh, mine should be probably a bit closer. Uh, so he limps here. We're not 100% sure what he's doing this with. Uh, he is a tight player, but unless he likes to limp re-raise big pairs, which some players do, uh, he's probably gonna he's gonna have a ton of uh, pocket pairs, small pocket pairs here, uh, suited connectors, king queen, those type of hands. Uh, so I three bet. Um, sorry, I uh, make it four x. I re-raise. It would be a standard three x plus um, a big blind per limper. So I make it four x, and let's see what happens. So he calls. What's what we're we're more or less expecting that. Um, we probably should have made it a bit more expensive uh, against this type of player. Uh, and at this point, we're assuming he's got something like five, six, and s two deuces to through sixes, um, some pseudo connectors, and so on. So that's a great flop. Uh, he's got almost no jacks here. Like, what would he be limping here? Maybe 10 jack. Um, but that's about it. Unless he also limps ace jack. Un unlikely um, we expect him to check we're gonna see bet here uh, he's gonna expect to see bet and then we've got to just we got to see like is this guy really really sticky so we don't really have much history on his uh, folding post flop um, so we have to see bet anyway and hopefully he's that type of player but no he decides to float us um, which is pretty expected, I guess. He's going to have things like 7s, 8s, 9s, 10s here. Uh, and it's correct for him to call at least one street. He's out of position, though. And, and you know, depending on the turn, you know, and, and my re my hand here, uh, I can push him off pretty easily. He's got 7s here. There's n almost no turn call that he's going to like. Uh, so it's going to make it tough for him to call. Let's see what I should. I should really bet again here against this player. But let's see what happens. He checks, and I bet again, which I'm really happy about. Picked up the, the, the what do you call it? The gut shot straight, and the king now gives me a straight. The ten will also uh, counterfeit sevens, eights, nines, etc. Uh, so I like that. He calls again. The turns a three, and now I'm in a tough spot, right? If I put him on sixes, sevens, and so on, like I really should bet again. Uh, but I don't know if he's going to fold. Uh, he ends up betting a dollar, <laughs> which I mean, what he would you be doing that with? You'd be doing that with with deuces, uh, any qu jack, I guess. If he's lucky enough to turn the ten or the th river the three. Probably doesn't have threes. Uh, I can't really do much against this. He's not, I mean, he's not really deep. Uh, and he's playing this very, 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 uh, well, let me say it like this. I've played my hand like basically queens plus. Uh, so when he bets a dollar here, he's kind of expecting me to court uh, the way I played this hand. I made it 4x pre-flop, I bet flop, bet turn, and now he leads he, do, he leads into me on the river, half, less than half pot. If I've got queens, kings, or aces, uh, it's going to be very difficult for me to fold. And he knows all of this. So when he bets the dollar, it's just, it looks like value, a value bet to me. Um, and I have the ace queen here, I can't really do much. If I had a jack, I'm obviously shoving. Um... Well, you know what, if I have a jack, do I shove? If I have ace-jack, I probably do shove. Uh, hopefully, well, actually, don't know if I would shove. Uh, what is he, I mean, what is he representing? He's kind of representing a full house, yeah. Um, or, or a strong jack. So if I have ace-jack, yeah, I'm basically splitting or losing. Um, maybe jack-king, now and then I beat, but it's a very small part of his range. He's more likely to have deuces, tens, threes, ace-jack-ten uh, here. So I just fold uh, and just give it up. Quite an interesting hand that. Uh, let's see, this I should fold. 
Where am I? Over here. I should fold this. Yep. Okay, let's see what I do here. Uh, I raise to try and steal. I get called by Loxa. I uh, won a pot from me earlier. Really bad board. Um, I don't really like to see bet this board too much. Uh, you know, he's gonna have, it's gonna have, it's gonna smash this board a lot of the time against uh, against my uh, steel. Uh, basically, his calling range against my steel is gonna include a lot of broadways. Uh, my hand can't really improve. I don't have a heart, so I could just check and give it up. That's fine. Next, King Jack. Open it up. It's also a bit of a uh, pretty loose open. Um, we are three, six, seven, eight handed. One, two, three, four, five behind. I guess it's not that bad. We do have four unknowns and uh, and a uh, a reg, so I guess that's all right. Let's see, and everyone folds. So we just pick up the money. Six deuce. We can skip. Six deuce. Okay, six deuce. Okay, ace jack of hearts. Raise this up. Pretty standard. And we get it through. Five queen. Get a walk. Okay, H10 of diamonds, raise it up, steal, six deuce, nine four, let's see if anything happened here. Okay, so we do have an interesting hand, ah, sorry, am I even in this hand? Yeah, I folded the six five, so skip that, nine ten, seven eight six. Okay, we're just going to skip through a lot of these hands. Let's see what we do here. Okay. Skip, 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 skip. Okay, pocket tens under the gun. We raise, get a call by the uh, demo over here. Reg, pretty, pretty good stats. Um, steals a lot, pretty tight range. Uh, not too aggressive. Let's see. So this is an interesting spot. We raise under the gun of tens. Um, get a call by uh, by reg. Get three bet here by an unknown player on the button. Um, we call. We have the odds to set mine. Um, there's 97 in the pot, so we're getting three to one, over three to one in the pot right now, plus the implied odds. Plus, we can get demo to come along, and also um, it's unlikely a demo's got something like Jack's plus here. He might every now and then, but you would expect him to three bet. Uh, so we're got kind of implied uh, set. Uh, what's what's the word I'm looking for? There's a chance. It's more likely that if we get set of a set. Um, against Democrook, even though it's something I'm not really thinking about when I'm playing, just something um, I do want to mention. It's much more likely in this scenario that um, we're going to hit the top set if Democrook does have a set, because he's going to have a lot of underpairs to the tens in his calling range here, um, and a lot less um, aces, uh, jacks plus. Um, when we get a uh, four bet, a uh, three bet here, now we're obviously expecting more uh, more likely that this player has an overpair uh, so we do want to kind of have that in the back of our mind so I call it a set mine demo calls and now oh and look at that we flop uh, we flop the top set so we're obviously very happy and now we want to kind of think about this what do we want to do to get the maximum value um, obviously we want to check uh, call on this flop um, no reason to re-raise the board is not wet, um, no reason to re-raise and push out things like ace-king, ace-queen. We want sevens and eights and nines to, to try and come along and, and f turn their sets. So we're going to check, demo checks, uh, and um, the original three better raises, uh, which is what we expect. Big bet, 
we're happy to see that we're just gonna call and demo disappears so demo didn't floppy set and now we're gonna play some turns turns aren't great um, brings in a flush draw uh, there's now gut shot to the straight um, if a three hits or any ace is gonna hit um, so uh, what do you want to do here uh, there's still a lot of turns which we aren't worried about right three I guess is the worst but that's about it right so we don't have to get too worried um, and I instead decide to shove I'm not so sure why I did that um, I guess I wanted to maybe protect my hand thinking um, a three or a six uh, would be bad a heart would be bad uh, and we want to just protect our hand and I decided to shove he's also got a pot size bet behind uh, so I guess it's not the end of the world to shove he's gonna over pair he's gonna be in a very tough spot a flush draw he might call um, ace 10 he's gonna maybe call set of fives or fours he's gonna call um, but I do think it might be a bit too aggressive uh, I guess what I might have been thinking is if I shove, I'm, I'm representing kind of a pair and a flush draw. But I don't think the players think that deeply. So um, probably checking here is better play. Or making it a dollar eighty or two dollars would be a bit better. Uh, I think I lose too much value by shoving here. So I shove. He ends up calling though, which I'm happy about. Uh, big pot. Uh, 12.7 12, 12 no, $12 dollar pot. Uh, rivers a three uh, and we scoop the pot so we're happy about that next see what happens here okay uh, so this let's see what happens, happens here we're in the cutoff see a raise I decided to three bet um, for some reason I'm not sure why the history of these of the players on isn't coming up because I know we've played more than We've seen more than zero hands at Gobi by now, but we right now have no stats on him. We're going to three bet with uh, ace nine of uh, clubs. Great hand to three bet with. And um, we have position on the player. Uh, suited, which adds a lot of value. We're also uh, got the blocker to the ace, so it's less likely he's got an ace. Um, and we expect to take it down either pre flop or with a C bet a lot of the time, so I'm happy with this. Uh, and Gobi decides to come along. We flop an open ender. It's a great flop. Uh, we do have to be a bit cautious though, because as I said, it's un it's less likely he's got an ace in his hand. So the if he doesn't have an ace, and this board does pr hits his range pretty well, he's gonna have sevens, nines, eights, tens, jacks, um, some flush draws, pseudo connectors like eight. 9, 9, 10, 7, 8. Uh, so it does hit his range pretty well, even though we did flop the open ender. Um, he checks. I decide to check. I think I want to see a turn, a cheap turn, um, knowing that this board hits him pretty well. Uh, rivers a, a turns an 8. Um, at this stage, if he checks again, I have to bet. Um, he does. I bet. And he calls. So at this stage, I'm not really sure what I'm putting him on. Um, he doesn't, unlikely he's got a full house. He's probably got something like 6, 7, s uh, seven uh, eight, uh, eight, uh, 8, 9, probably not. 10, 9 is probably very likely. Jack, Queen, 5, 6, these kind of hands. Flush draws. So, I mean, I'm hoping the river bricks and I just get down to, uh, I mean, the river bricks like a deuce or a three and we can go check, check, I'll pick it up. River's a king of hearts, not a great card for me. Flash draw got there. Um, he ends up checking. I got to check behind. I can't really see any value in, in betting here. Uh, and unfortunately, you know, he had ace king and he spiked that king uh, to win the pot. Let's move on. Ace King of Diamonds on the button. A raise. Get a core by Loxa. 
it's a great flop we want to see bet this flop every time he checks we see bet and he folds ace 10 in the big blind get a walk okay three four of spades mid raise we're getting huge uh implied odds plus pretty decent price so we're gonna come along and flop 899 we miss entirely check multi-way bet we got a fold nothing else we can do here sevens raise it up denny calls it's a good flop we're gonna continuation bet on this flop and we pick it up nine six on the button just decide to fold ten queen this we can raise it up here and we do get a nice steal ace queen middle position well actually under the gun plus one we raise get a caller uh, also no once again like i said earlier well this is a different player but we don't know anything about this player so let's assume we don't know we have no stats on him we've got to see him S assume he's a uh, he's a standard player um pretty good flop for us it's pretty wet board we definitely don't want to check here and give away a free card no reason to do that um there are some possibilities of of uh, him having a set deuces or fives but it doesn't happen that often so we can't immediately put him on that uh, we do want to just always think what are the try our best to put the player on, on uh, our opponents on ranges um so we have to assume most of the time here we have the best hand and therefore we've got to start building a pot uh want to bet a pretty st up a standard uh around 60 percent pot get called turns a five that's a really good card um unlikely had a five so we want to continue pretty pretty standard so far um, when he calls again we got to think what does this guy have now right because if he had king queen he didn't really call i mean he, d he can't really put him on king queen nine ten so as the hand progresses the potential combos of hands now drops right or we have to since we have more information now on the turn uh we have to readdress uh his his range um we also probably don't put him on something like fives or deuces at this point right because we would expect him to raise uh at some some time um if he had a, a, a deuces or something like ace five deuce five so at this stage we're saying to ourselves there's really two main possibilities he's either got an ace uh and it's probably not ace king because he would have raised us maybe ace queen now and then but we're assuming ace jack ace 10 we can see he's got ace jack but now you know what is he holding if we couldn't see his cards we're, we're guessing something like ace 10 ace 9 ace 7 ace 6 maybe ace jack ace queen ace king unlikely because we would expect him to three bet that he might also have something like jacks uh queens now and then and he just doesn't believe us still um and the other very big part of his range is gonna be flush draws you know things like king queen of clubs nine ten of clubs uh six seven of clubs and so on um, so now we're kind of hoping to dodge a club and four isn't the greatest card three gets there um, if he had something like four three uh, well four three would have turned the straight or he would have flopped the straight so it's also unlikely he's got a four three he might have um, well we got, he doesn't really have many threes then right because four three flopped it and we don't think he's got that because we expected him to raise the turn um, he might have had ace three um, so I probably should bet here again but I decided to check uh, he checks I lose a bit of value um, decided to play it a bit passively uh, and I picked up a pot so can't complain too much let's move on okay pocket nines in the small blind let's see so here I picked up pocket nines in the small blind there was an under the gun um, under the gun raise uh, call and 
the button for uh, three bits, pretty big, over a buck. Uh, it's twenty big, over twenty. It's twenty-one big blinds. Uh, he bet here. So here's the thing: a lot of players will actually would say, "Why not? Uh, why not set mine?" You basically you're almost getting the odds, right? Um, first of all, no, you definitely don't have the odds here yeah, because I have to call another dollar into a dollar sixty to win a potential uh, to win five bucks. So I'm calling another dollar to win five, six, less than seven dollars. Uh, you know, I'm getting basically one in seven and you need a lot more than that if you want to set mine profitably and reason for that is because you're only going to flop that set one in seven and a half to eight um it's, i think it's like 1.74 1.75 uh but here's the thing how often are you stacking the guy uh, it's probably 30 40 percent of the time if you're lucky I uh, actually haven't ran the, run those numbers myself, um, but the uh, the the other reason, assuming you really put this guy on an overpay, which you can't really do, uh, but assuming you did, and you say you know what, if you flop the nine, you're going to stack him every single time, then you know, then then do I have the odds? Well, here's the problem that you're not really considering, is what about the original razor now if this guy's aces here and you end up call if and i called here this guy like every single time or at least he should be every single time four betting here with uh kings and aces ace king he probably ships it as well queens most players would also ship it so now you're definitely not getting the odds and you're just throwing your money into the pot hoping um and you don't want to do that so this is definitely a fold he ends up folding uh call let's see he bets and a fold okay let's move on yeah i pick up aces raise and unfortunately no action six deuce king four let's see what happens here raise and I decide to give it up My pocket sevens raise call and a th three bet um, once again I need to put in now uh, 45 to win what is that around five bucks um, 45 to win five bucks getting getting what is that it's 10 to 1 uh, so I, I'm definitely getting the odds here but I decided to give it up um, which I think is fine it's it's kind of on the border but what I've been doing uh, or what I was doing one of the things I was experimenting with a lot was uh, calling less or small pocket pairs against three bets I was I, I worked out that I was kind of costing myself a lot of money um by doing that uh so i started folding quite a bit um set mining a lot less when i didn't have great implied odds and it made a big difference actually to my to my bottom line so looking for a good spot here uh, over here i could have probably should have raised and isolated um a6 doesn't play great post flop especially the unsuited one uh, unsuited combos but this is a very weak play and I could probably get some value from this guy by raising uh, let's see what happened here so he has pretty standard raise of my, uh, by me um, we're going to play uh, pot in position with uh, two broadways uh, not a great flop uh, he leads out I re-raise um, <laughs> this is also uh, I'm not too sure uh, I don't like it when they donk into me and by raising you you do make quite a bit of uh, profit um, by doing it. He's going to have a ton of hands here though and he's going to be calling with a lot of them. 5-7, uh, 5-4, five, five, any 6, any 8, any flush draw, any gut shot, pot potentially over, over cards. 
a lot of pocket pairs so so much of his range is he's calling with um i could turn the jack with a queen but the jack or queen of hearts is not going to i'm not going to be too happy about um so i'm not sure if i like this race too much i guess if i just give it up you know what I, like what i do then it's so weak if i just fold so i'm not too sure what to do in this spot um but he ends up folding so i guess i'm happy with that um yeah i'm not too sure what the right players here <laughs> moving on let's see if i try to steal here no okay okay let's move on let's look at this hand so here we've got king jack um of hearts uh, not a great hand facing under the gun plus one raise it's a hand i should probably either three bet um or fold uh i don't know if calling calling is not great um but i do end up calling uh, it's it's probably it's definitely losing play in the long run here i'm gonna have a, a negative uh, equity edge in this case he's gonna have a lot more better kings and jacks um plus uh you know opening up great opportunity for play these three guys here to to re-raise um got my dead money in the middle uh so i'm not a fan of this play uh do end up spiking the second pair and the backdoor flush draw uh he bets at this point i should definitely call one uh, and see the turn um end up turning the jack it's obviously a great uh, best card but you know, yeah, you can get yourself a lot of trouble in spots like this. If he's got uh, nines or aces, which are definitely in his range, I'm now basically I'm drawing very, very thin. Uh, Ace Jack, I'm obviously I'm I'm drawing dead. Uh, you know, those are going to be in his range, and th this is the reason why you don't really just want to call with this with his hand. Um, he ends up checking. I think I got a bet. Um, reason being. A lot of turn cards are going to kill my action if he's got something like a seven and a ten a king or a queen hits he's going to assume he's he's beat beat uh any flush draw i want to price him out uh or at least charge him for it uh he could have something like jack queen here uh, jack ten so i definitely want to uh build a part um by betting and he ends up folding so he probably had something like pocket sixes sevens eights um i don't think he had the ace or if he did he made a really good call a uh, good fold so let's let's see let's move on Okay, I'm, I'm going to go a bit quicker now, um, just find the hands where I either won um, or lost uh, a lot of money. Well, the ones that are indicated by the colors over here. So over here, uh, ace, queen on the button, um, strong hand. Yeah, I definitely should have three bet here. I'm not sure why I just called. Um, fortunately, the HUD stats aren't appearing. Okay, there they are. Uh, Alex unknown I need to definitely three bet here um, I'm not sure why I just called <laughs> it's a bit too weak I'm inviting the blinds to come in for a decent price now uh, I definitely don't want to do that ace king four decent flop um, gotta assume I have the best hand a lot of the time here uh, he bets just over just over half pot uh, at this stage, I definitely want to, um, I could call a raise, um, there's merit for both of them, raising is probably the least best option, uh, I want to keep all the pocket pairs um, and weaker aces in, if I raise here, he's going to fold his 6s, 7s, 8s, uh, he can't really bluff me anymore, if he was, um, the problem with just calling though is now, He's got something like nine, ten of diamonds. Um, 
he gets to basically see the turn for no extra cost uh, so I mean both ways are fine I think calling is the better play I end up raising him though uh, he ends up re-raising me and I end up folding um, when he re-raises me here he's basically put he's put in more around half his stack uh, and it's a very 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 strong play on the flop here he's basically representing aces kings ace king uh, pocket fours he's also re-raised me he's re-raised my bet f almost four times um, which is a very big raise he's basically you know let's get the money in right now um, and it tells me that he's basically got a monster hand here uh, he might have something like jack queen of diamonds um, you know maybe he plays something like nine ten of diamonds this way now and then but it's basic it's kind of telling me because of the sizing that I have ace king you know I want to protect my hand if let's go if, he's, if you've got the set then so be it um, by betting so big if he had something like aces or, or kings um, I would expect a smaller raise but um, fold is definitely the right play for me here I mean unless you know also because I don't have any hands in this guy I don't know that he's a a super crazy fish who might be doing this with ace 9 ace 10 it's also it's such a strong play here um, it's very unlikely for him to be doing it with a hand like that let's move on okay let's have a look at this one pocket queens in the small blind uh, at this stage I'm thinking Okay, I don't have any hands yet on this guy, but I got a re-raise here. Got to build a stack, uh, build a pot. I'm out of position. Um, Ace or king hits the flop. It's going to become a tough hand to play. Uh, and for those reasons, I and for that reason, I want to raise. Also, you know, if I want him to come, al I want him to. Um, I let me say it like this: If he's got a strong, p uh, if if he's got a strong hand here, he's going to call. So I might as well raise, right? Because um, I want to build a pot with my premium hands, and Queen's definitely a pre Queen's is definitely a premium hand. So I make it three x uh, standard. I might have made it a bit bigger because I'm in a small blind. That's fine. Um, he four bets me, and he four bets very small, and this is a bit scary uh, when they do this. Um, I now have to kind of make a decision. If I call. Um, another 65 cents it's going to take the pot to two two dollars and twenty um, leaving me with a stack to pot ratio of around two uh, two and a bit um, which means I'm basically going with my hand um, if I re-raise him here and I get it in um, I guess I've got to hope he doesn't have kings or aces right uh, because I don't know much about this guy, like I have no hands on this guy, uh, I think re-raising's actually the best play. Uh, and I end up shoving, he ends up folding, and we win the pot. Um, if I had jacks here, um, it's much tougher spot. Um, can't really call to see to to uh, set mine. Um, and then it's kind of more of a 50-50 do I shove or just do I just fold the hand um, so I pick up a nice little pot there no uh, no risk and we're moving on okay nine eight off let's see what happens here uh, big blind the button limps uh, you should be raising it every time uh, or folding um, and we get to see a flop flop top two um, now we have a choice right we can check uh, with the intention of either calling his raise um, or check raising or just to see a turn um, or we could lead into him um, 
I actually like to uh, lead into him here. I think he's going to check behind a, a lot of the time. Um, which means I'm not really going to have a chance to check raise him. And then I just give him a free turn. Um, and it's pretty bad board. A uh, pretty wet board. So I should bet here. But I end up checking. Which I'm not too happy about. Uh, he does end up betting though. Which I'm happy. And now I definitely got a, I'm definitely got a raise. Um, I do. I make it 4x. Which is good. Make it even a bit more. Um, and what I'm hoping here is that he's got something like uh, tens jacks queens kings or aces and decided just to limp um not raise we also know ahead of time that he's he's probably not probably not a good player because of his stack size he could be a short stacking uh, reg but he would have raised then so i don't think he's a short stacking reg i just think he's a really weak player who's doesn't have a lot of money left and that's why he's sitting with um the start of the hand like three th three bucks uh 36 cents um so I could make it a bit bigger here, but what I'm hoping he basically has is a is a flush draw, so you'll end up calling and trying to chase uh, an over pair or a nine. Um, he ends up calling, which I'm happy about. Turns a six, not the best card. Five seven got there, um, seven ten got there, but also things like uh, eight six got there, five six four six, and I still beat those hands. So. I want to bet now I'm pretty big protect my hand um, 75 cents that's fine uh, and he ends up folding pretty standard so guys I'm gonna do one more um, it's getting late here uh, and I'm not even sure how long this video has been going for I think around half an hour uh, I'll be doing more of these hands um, more of these videos hopefully in the future I actually like this format let me know what you think uh but let's let's do one more uh and then i'll wrap it up so i'll just move this we've got your three four of diamonds uh on the button um facing a raise by um a 200 big blind stack over 200 big blinds so that's a factor we want to kind of look at our stack and work out if we have now very big uh, implied odds we have a basically a full stack um, so now we're a bit le more likely to to call with three four because if we do win, if we do flop a big hand, uh, we could potentially double up uh, versus someone with three bucks where we can't, and then you know it's it's not as profitable. So here we get another call. I'm in position with three four uh, three four of, uh, diamonds, so we want to call here, um, potentially win a huge pot, uh, potentially play a big pot. Uh, in position, uh, with the handage plays pretty pretty easily, uh, pretty well post flop. Um, do now face a three bet, um, which is not great for us. It's another thirty five cents. We're getting almost three to one, but the problem is this guy is pretty short. Um, let's see what happens. We get another caller. So now we're getting around four to one call the problem is um we're getting less than 10 to 1 implied odds on this player uh so it's a bit more borderline but this guy came along and you know uh if he gets frisky or flops a good pair and we got a better pair than uh, a, be a better hand then we could still win a lot so it's a bit borderline but i think a call is fine we want to see the flop and and decide what to do then uh so we flop a monster um flush draw gut shot uh actually it's an open end of straight flush <laughs> so uh any ace any six uh and any diamond we're assuming are is good any ace or six of diamonds gives us a straight flush uh so we basically never f we we can't ever fold in, in this spot uh, let's see what happens. Checks, check. Um, it's a bit surprising we see the check, check. We would expect the small blind to a continuation bet here with all these over pairs. Um, so we're kind of not putting him on an over pair anymore. Uh, so now we've got to decide what do we want to do on a bet or fold. 
I think Benning's good because we can maybe just pick up the pod right here. Um, and nothing wrong with that. And if they come along, we're going to have so many turn cards that can help our hand. Uh, so I like to bet here. And I bet a buck. I'm also not really folding here, uh, no matter what happens. Um, and we get a call, turns a three. So our equity has now grown even more. Um, because now if we were up against well I mean now we have a pair right versus two over cards which is what this player has uh, we're now beating um, so we're gonna actually well now we can decide what we want to do right if it comes check we can check behind take the free card um, but there's already there's basically a pot size bet left I don't see a reason why not to bet um, if he checks, I should just, just shove it. Uh, I have so much equity, and I have implied odd. Uh, I have uh, I have fold equity, and I can just pick up the pot. And if he does call, then let's think. Any three, any four potentially, um, any diamond potentially, any ace, any six, and we can still get the straight flush outs. Um, so, you know, we got to shove. He ends up calling, um, and... Now we're basically just hoping not for for a diamond, which isn't an ace or a six. So, uh, so he's like really drawing dead almost. Uh, well, we also don't want to obviously hit a king or a ten. Um, let's see, does it give us the equity? Yeah, I'm 75% favorite in this spot. So, really profitable shove. Uh, we end up winning a nice pot. So that's it guys. Uh, thanks a lot for watching. Um, if you enjoyed this video, and please subscribe to my channel. Uh, I also invite you to visit my blog, thegreatgrind.com. Uh, I'll be posting this video there uh, with um, some of the, the themes of the video. Uh, some common, like some of the, the concepts I covered. And uh, I wish you all the best and thanks again. Take care.